Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Anthony Richardson, rookie year, week one, start versus the Jags. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> So before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This is a great way to support the channel. Not only are you supporting the channel, but you're getting even more Quarterback School content. So if you dig the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. Usually long form videos over there trying to recreate what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So lots of truth, lots of details, nuance about the quarterback position, offensive philosophy, schemes, defensive structure, pressure, coverages. All those types of things. If that sounds like your jam, you'll love the quarterback school Patreon community. Link is in the video description. Hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. All right, Anthony Richardson, first start right out the gate, third and two. I'm going to say this is an RPO. Not a perfect throw. Hell of a catch from 83. Anthony Richardson knows it right away. Says, thank you very much for catching my high heater. If this is an RPO, which I think it is, is just how they're blocking it, the aggressiveness coming off the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure who he's reading, and I would venture to guess that this is probably not the correct read if it is an RPO. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about, first of all, how you can tell is just watching the line of scrimmage. So if you're getting potential like combo blocks or say the right guard is hitting here and then like climbing up to the next level, that's a good indication that it's run and not true naked. Now what they end up running here is what I'm used to calling just like a spot or snag. So there's a spot or snag. There's the corner. And then instead of running a flat from the number three over here, they just run him like sneak flat and he's able to come across. And the reason I say it's probably not the correct read, now it works out, so it doesn't really matter what the hell I think. But if you're assuming this is the conflict defender, if he gets outside and you allow this sneak flat to come underneath him, that's usually the indicator that you want to hand it off. So if for some reason he closes it down here and the sneak flat goes around him, well then that's usually the indicator that you want to pull it. Right here, nobody covers him, so it doesn't matter. But just kind of like understanding the play here, I'm not sure how he knows to pull this. Now, if you hand it to him, I'm not sure he gets a first down. So good on five here for making it happen. But throw-wise here, you know, you can understand he's going to come out, be jacked up, ready to drive this thing down the field. It's not the easiest throw in the world to touch this thing. And again, watching 41 in the E-gap there, you know, it's going to be tough to sort through. Either way, that's a hell of a catch. Thank you very much for not allowing five to miss a layup here. Look at his <laughs> look at his reaction. I love the passion, the body language like this. Let's go. Thank you very much for catching that. Next one here. Man, I love me some comprehensive, robust quarterback run game. Little GT read out of pistol flex bone. <laughs> hell yes. This is what a game plan looks like with an athletic dynamic quarterback off of an offseason. You come off with some funky, awesome quarterback run game stuff that pops. I love it, man. This is what it should look like, Chicago. Hint, hint. So design. What is? What am I talking about? First, just the formation here. So formation for me, pistol. Got the tailback right behind us. What I'm going to call flex bone here with the little wings offset or kind of sniffers offset at an angle. Okay, to me, that's flex bone. Now we get a little motion here. So we're going to go in motion. And then we're going to run GT. So this front side is all gap down. So they've got gap down, gap down, gap down. And then we're going to kick and we are going to wrap. Okay, that's the GT part of it. The conflictor defender we're going to read right here. So if he can tackle the back, you pull it. If he can't tackle the back, he gets up the field. Then you hand it off to the back running GT. So it's just re-GT. I love it. It's not a new play. It's a cool way to smash it together with pistol bone but it pops. The other thing I like about it is watch 14 at the bottom. He's cracking. Coming in, boom, block the edge. Nice lead blocker built into it as well. It's just got so many different answers. It puts stress on the defense with the formation, the quick motion. Again, you can see us reading that left edge player, left C gap player. He comes down, pull it, and we're gone. And that's no like random athlete at 44. That dude can roll. We're putting him in a blender right here. Really nice deuce as well. Watch the right guard, right tackle. 
deuce up to the backer. Boom. Man, I love me some quarterback run game. Change the math. Thought this was a really clean, cool rep here. Second and nine. We're going to be hot up top, and we're going to just put the slant in. That's a hell of a route, too, and one has some wiggle and some jets to them. I feel like I need some sound effects with this, but we're hot to the right. They bring that backer from the inside up the B-gap. Now, we take a big shot, but this is operating from a really high level quarterback-wise. You know, I'm probably not thinking I'm going to get hot very often from empty second and long, but right here. So if this linebacker blitzes, we're going to be hot in the B-gap. So we're going to answer it with what I'm going to call a little short post or slant. Now, in a perfect world, I would say just get it and go because we got to get rid of the ball fast enough. I would say potentially faster than this so we don't take hits like this all year. This little wiggle at the top of this thing, while it works and creates the big play, it also allows the quarterback to get blasted. So just kind of putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. We're hot. Throw it. Just don't take the hit. So again, catch it. Decisive. Look at him go to throw. As we win on the slant or the short post, and now it's a big chunk right up the heart of the defense. It's an outstanding job quarterbacking. Hot to the right, free runner, put it on him. Again, I, I just think maybe you could play it a tick faster with the route and maybe getting some depth and throwing like a fadeaway because that's a big shot. Man, you don't want to take shots like that all year. But I love the fact that he gets it out, make him pay for being hot. Let's go. Hell yeah. Next one here, touchdown run. I love this play design so much. Awesome shift. The play is technically what I would call a PRO, a pass run option. It's just Q counter. It walks in. Love the celebration. Again, the passion. There's a lot to like here, y'all. This is design. This is what an offseason looks like. Put your signature on the game. Offensive architecture and design. Outstanding. It's so good. Thank you for doing this. This is what it looks like to run the quarterback and run it well. So first of all, the shift okay, from this bullshit diamond formation. We get to another bullshit formation. Great. Yes, please. Shift. Then we motion. Okay, so all that <laughs> to get into this formation, like old school football. But what is the play? So the play to me, and the reason I call it a PRO, is it looks like the pass happens first. So do you like this flat? Hey, if yes, throw. What does the leverage look like throw? If you don't, we're going to run Q counter. Q counter for my money here is gap down to the left side. So we're coming back, we're back, we're back. We're asking the guard here to kick, and then we're asking the sniffer to wrap. So he's coming up for that inside linebacker type. And we're just going to read this thing out. If you like the flat, throw it. Otherwise, run it. I mean, it's a thing of beauty, y'all, from this crazy condensed formation. Three by two to three by two, I guess. I love it, man. Watch the flat up top. Is it there? Probably not. Could he throw it? Maybe. Go. I mean, that's beautiful, man. That's awesome. Offensive architecture. Great design. Creativity. Shift. Funky formation. Shift. Motion. PRO. Or RPO for you. QB School 101 people, but you got this. You can cover it. Great design, man. Look at that. Just so much stress on a defense. Awesome athleticism. Third and 12 here. This is a tough one for me. I want to call this a turn down, y'all. The new number two to the bottom, 83. I'm going to call this a seven up, a little corner up. You know, it takes forever, and I'm not sure it would be wide open. It would might be contested, but for my money, I probably would have liked to seen this thrown. So we're going to get a half field defender to our right with the safety. We've got the pass pro to do it. I think he just gets off of it a tick early. And again, you know, maybe they are saying punt after a third down completion is okay or get us closer to a go forth situation. But for me here, golly, this is close to being a perfect look. So the play here for me is that's a post. Here's that corner up. Now that takes forever. Okay, and we have this half field player, and he's going to go with the post. So basically, can you get it up and down before this corner and this safety get back to that seven up right here? You know, it takes forever. I, th I probably would like to see him throw it again. Maybe I'm being too picky. Check down after it's all right. We'll go for it on fourth down. Maybe, I don't know, man. Pause this thing at the top. You be the judge. You know, it's taking forever. 
And it's easy for me to see with the safety baseball turns like that. If you could see the baseball turn, but he really baseball turns after we throw the check down. So, you know, as I watch it, I'm kind of talking myself into the check down. But you can see, I, I can just see the bones of the architecture of another really nice, well-designed play. We just don't get it taken. Don't hit it here. It really takes a little bit too long to develop, if I'm being honest, with the personnel running that 7-up. But, man, I like the idea. I like the pass pro, too. You know, and again, if we're going to complain, complaining about a completion on third down is usually a pretty good thing. Next one here, second and 10. We're going to go get to two by two wing slot. My, one of my favorite formations, run four verticals. The logo, you're welcome. I love calling four verticals for young quarterbacks. I think many young quarterbacks see it well. They can drive it. It's not a touch throw when you're working the seams. That's a beautiful job. That's as good as you'll see. Big hit, obviously, penalty nowadays. I love how they get there as well. So we're going to go from starting, you know, what I'm used to calling a one by three. So with the tight end over here, one by three nub. Okay. Then you get to a two by two wing slot. Okay. So wing slot is tough because this is the passing strength. This is the running strength. So it can conflict some defensive rules here as far as how they want to align, what they want to do. And then we're just going to get to four verticals. So there's the seam. There's that kind of outside go, seam, go. Okay, the bones of it. Catch middle field closed, work the seam that you want. It's really easy when they're going to carry the number two to one side or the other. He does a great job here to get this ball up and down quickly. Normally, I say 20 yards is the ceiling here, maybe 22 yards in high school, where you want to get this thing up and down. If you do it in the teens, you're really playing it quickly. It's really impressive right here. Boom. And again, the reason he can get it up so quickly is because of the shuffle drop. He doesn't really take a traditional three. So shuffle, great base, hit that back foot, rip it. I love it, yo. I love it. Outstanding. Boom. Nice chunk. Again, I like it for young quarterbacks because you can see it develop and you can just let it rip. It's a rip throw. Boom. Hit that back foot. Great timing to it when you do use the shuffle. Let it go. Beautiful ball right up on his grill. Let's go. Next one, we're back to the pistol bone play action. Rip the drift post down here to the bottom. Throws a little bit behind him. But man, I love this formation. I love the action. Fake the split flow action. We're going to rip it right down the hash. Whoop, right on him. And this is a thing of beauty, y'all. Just appreciate the design here. We've got the split flow action. So the short motion. Coming downhill, pull those linebackers up. We're lined up to throw the drift post. Look at the feet. Let it go. Maybe just a half tick late. But, man, that's that's a thing of beauty. Design-wise, offensive architecture, rip it right on him. On the body, on the break, let's go. So, from the wide here, again, the exact same motion formation we saw just flipped here. So, here's the pistol. Here's the flex part of it or offset with the sniffers with our feet at the 45 we're going to split flow action so there it is here's that short motion he's going to then roll out we're going to hit him with the drift post to the bottom there it is versus middle field close nice beautiful window right there man <laughs> it's awesome to see this kind of offensive architecture put together and the layered plan so we saw the quarterback run out of it last time with the gt read this time we come back Hit him with this split flow action, right downhill, right down the hash, rip it. Outstanding. Let's go. Next one here, a little RPO verse pressure. Nice job getting it to the slant up top on the number two. Thing of beauty here with the timing of this thing. This is really an RPO plus one, so an easy read. If we're reading the linebacker type 33 and we get the pressure from two, I mean, this makes it easy right here. So... This is to me is just wide zone to our left. So as we're coming across, we're reading the conflict defender right here. So if he were to insert into the run, we would throw whatever's on the backside. Well, not only does he insert into the run, but we get the plus one out here. So we get both of them pressuring, which is like the premium look to then be able to go back and throw whatever is going to come in here and replace them with the RPO. So again, just do the math here. If we're going to base block the backside here, just kind of go one-on-one, -on -one, 
one-on-one, and we're essentially going to ask these three to block the three most dangerous and zone it out on the front side, try to reach it if we can. Pretty clean, easy read with the conflict defender, made even easier with the plus one pressure. We get two here, and we just be able to play this play exactly how it's designed to be played and don't miss a layup. Catch, see it, boop. Again, you can see both of them right in the lane, and there it is. Just a really nice job. Outstanding RPO. Let's go. From the wide, you can really see the spacing of this thing. If this is the RPO conflict defender and he's going to blitz. And, okay, so just if he was going to blitz normally, we'd say, hey, we like this. Will you add the additional, what I'm calling the plus one to this side? So they both blitz. And then it creates just this massive void where you're asking this safety from the heavens to come over and try to tackle this guy in space and stop this kind of hot RPO slant throw up top. Just a really nice job. Outstanding call versus this kind of defense. Really nice job. Again, love incorporating the RPO game with Anthony Richardson. He does a nice job dealing right here. Nice little chunk. Pretty nice touchdown pass here. Anytime you score on a second and 20 and nine, you know things are going right for you. Tunnel screen to the bottom. Really like the way that this is constructed with what looks like the play action fake. Kind of looks like that zone read action. Really puts that defensive end in a bind. So oftentimes on these tunnel screens, I think the most important parts are the offensive line play, getting out and making sure you've got guy covered up. And that can really impact what that kind of cavalry defensive line, how they act on these screen plays impacts to me how these things go. So what I'm talking about is if your offensive line just go, so say they kind of like fake pass pro real quick, like kind of faux fake. So you come up here and like quick set or step down and go. Everyone kind of steps down and goes. To me, the de good defensive lines kind of feel those faux blocks, and they'll turn and run and go tackle these from behind, kind of cavalry inside out. But because of how this is constructed with the quarterback run game, so we're going this way. He's stepping down the left tackle. He going down, down. That looks like wide zone, right? They run that where they're going to you know, read the C-gap player. He thinks he's going to surf this thing and squeeze it, try to play both. But when he slow plays this, that then allows the tight end to go block the corner, the tackle to leak off into the alley, the guard to get up to the second level player, the center to come around and hit the trail. It kind of all works together. It doesn't work this well if you don't have that quarterback run game package. So again, the surf allows the center to come around and seal that defensive end. That's really the thing that pops this thing and then it's outstanding effort from 11 to get in the end zone all that kind of stuff but watch the center and the defensive end on our left he's going to surf it like zone read come across surf well it's a screen out the other way you know the three technique nobody touches center does a great job pinning boop there it is and now it pops nice blocks downfield outstanding acceleration there to finish it let's go touchdown next one here third and 11 Third and 11 usually always sucks. This to me is an iteration of all hook. So whether it's a seven stop up top by the number two, a deep hook over the ball by the number one up top, and then a curl down here to the bottom. I personally think the ball should probably go to the curl at the bottom. Now this ends up being a hell of a play from Anthony Richardson just to get it to the back on the check down. But I think he this play, you know, besides for not being my favorite because the guys are all static when they start and stop, this idea being right there, that's pretty crazy that he could just flick it to the back going down like that. Got to be careful with those. But the design here for me, if we're going to do this, okay, and so what I'm going to call this is, is essentially up top, we're going to get the number two come up and run like a seven stop. But he gets to curl spacing. Down here to the bottom, curl. Okay, to me, deep curl, whatever you want to call it. Over the ball, that deep hook. So all of these guys have the opportunities to get a first down. The reason I don't love it is because they all have to turn and stop to do it versus staying on the run. The way that I would prefer this to be read is whoever squeezes this player, this is the one, whoever squeezes or takes away. So if it gets squeezed from this side, then let's work this curl as the two. If it gets squeezed from up top, so whatever player takes it away is from this side, well then let's work the up top seven stop or corner stop as the number two. So if that was the case here, for my money, this thing over the ball gets squeezed from this side. That means that this area is being vacated. So when we come back and reach this curl, then that should be there. 
So that's the idea about where it gets squeezed is where we work as the number two. And that's just kind of like taking Scott Hank and pushing it out deeper. So read this thing out over the ball. Do you like it over the ball with the number one up top? You know, no. Who's taking it away? You know, probably the guy on the X. I mean, they're getting taken away from both sides. You know, potentially you have this curl down here to the bottom. It's going to be tough. I'm not saying there's a great answer. I am saying that's outstanding effort to keep fighting and get it to the back and who knows what's going to happen. But I would like to see him play this thing out where he gets the curl on the left. Again, easier said than done. But I think right there, you know, if he were to go up in the pocket, reset up, shuffle up, he maybe gets to that curl on the backside. Again, it's not always going to be perfect. It's certainly not going to be perfect in your first start. But man, that effort, so you throw a little like jump hook, left-handed hook going down. My goodness. Great fight. Love it. Next one here, we go back to the logo. Four verts down here to the bottom. We already hit the inline tight end on a seam. For my money, the ball probably should go back to the seam here. Not that the back isn't there. I think he throws it maybe a little bit hard just for the distance of this throw. But he's already hit the tight end up the seam. It looks like a similar good look here. I think if he had to play this play over again, he would hit the seam again. Again, we've already talked about it, but might as well. The seam here to me is there. It's paired with this kind of fly motion go, gets on the outside. Four verticals up top. Doesn't matter if, what they run on the outside. The bones of this is four verticals. Again, we catch middle field closed. We're carrying the two to the field. That's an easy decision right here. So for me, he's already proven he can make this read. Now we just need to see him make it consistently. Got to throw this ball down here to the Y. Look at it, throw it, throw it, throw it. It's there. Timing, rhythm. Now is the drop the same? No. Remember last time he did like a little shuffle. This time he's doing three and a hitch. Maybe that footwork makes him feel like he's a little bit late to it. Either way, if you're going to come down to the check down, for me here you need to pull the string and throw a little bit more of a catchable ball on this Texas or fan. I mean, it's right on him. He's, he's got to catch it too. It just looks like it comes out a little hot. No, at the end of the day, I still think he should throw the seam. Especially with the backer getting width versus depth. Watch 33. See him get width to our left versus depth, like 33 on the right. Sorry, so 23, whatever the left linebacker is, the guy standing right over the center, he moves. Watch him get width versus depth. So width right there, that's a seam. Let's throw the seam. Boom. A little high-low on him. Probably make the wrong decision. Next one here, third and nine. This is shallow cross, old-school shallow cross for my money with a speed out up top. Take the speed out. Great anticipation, good arm strength. You know, don't necessarily love throwing an out route that doesn't get the depth for a first down. But again, that's not necessarily on the quarterback. I think this is outstanding anticipation and accuracy. Again, the concept here for me is just this speed out. If you like it, almost like an alert or option, if you like it, throw it. I would just add, you know, offensive philosophy down and distance wise. I would expect him to get the first down with this or the play call, the design of it to get the first down. If he's not going to get the first down, it's pretty hard throw to punt. There's the deep hook. One of these guys running the shallow, the other one probably running the seven stop, corner stop or curl in this space. And you just read that thing right to left. Really nice job. It's there. Watch the anticipation. Pause it at the top, slow it down. He's separated right there. You can see he's not out of the outbreak out top, up top. The ball's right on him. Just brings him back. Nice tackle. Fourth and short. Again, really nice, decisive, three, no hitch. One, two, three, boom. You can see him hit all that back foot in the ground. Rotate, violent rotation. Doesn't have to get through the throw. Boom. That's a heater. Nice. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me personally, so thank you for doing that. We also have the Quarterback School Patreon community. You know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content over there. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are by far the most in-depth premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on a lot of my favorite football subjects, RPOs, tempos, pass protection. How to Beat Every Coverage is the best-selling course. We even have an entire offensive system available over there. So hop over there, 
check out the courses and enroll. The links are in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources available, also linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. The very next play here, fourth and one, they go for it. Love the aggressiveness. I love the play call here. Everything except the block from 14. You know, this probably walks for a first down. Don't really care about the fumble here on fourth down. They're going to get the ball regardless if you get stuffed. I love the design. I talked about something similar to this in a Justin Fields video. We're looking for creativity coming out of the offseason. I think this is a really cool design play. So you get up into this funky, essentially quads. Okay, so what's going on here just to appreciate the design of this? This is a tight end. Okay, this is the center. This is either the guard or tackle. This is the third guy. So they've got an overload over here. The next part is we've got what I'm used to calling essentially quads. So four eligibles over here. One, two, three, four. We're essentially going to run toss crack, but they're lined up to take away sneak, right? They're filled out in the A and B gaps. It's You don't have to be like a running game kind of savant to find the bubble. Okay, If you want to be a run guru, run to the bubble is a nice kind of basic rule. Right here, the bubble's right here. Now, all that being said, you can have the perfect design play, the trick em dick em here. We need these guys to come in here and crack and crack. And if they don't seal it, it doesn't matter. You can't run toss to nothing. You've got to run toss crack in these situations. Toss to miss the first guy is going to be an issue. So 14's got to bow up and hit 23 right in the mouth right there. We can't whiff. That then blows up the wrapper with 83, and now we're screwed. So again, just watch the blocking on the right. Watch 14, the number two. If he blocks 23, and you don't even have to block him, you just have to seal him. Okay, so if we get two seals here, this thing is a perfectly designed play. So seal right here, and then seal the next one, right? You build like a little wall right here, so that you build this wall, and then we're gonna bring the big guys. Okay, so depending on what's going on here, if we're trying to get a reach or we're going, Okay, we've got all sorts of great opportunities to capture the edge here with that bubble. The only thing I would say that would help you potentially at 14 here is switch your feet inside foot back to get a better angle for that. Again, it's a really nice job by the extra tackle over, the kind of the right tight end, 79, to reach that thing. And I mean, man, 83 should be out on the corner and this thing should be a big hit. Damn, so close. But I love the aggressiveness and the design just not the execution. All right, third and 13. We're drawing up four verticals again, logo style, two by two open. This is probably the hardest look you can get or one of the harder looks you can get in four verticals. Two by two, you're trying to rip a seam versus quarters to the inside guy. It's there. It's not an easy throw. He just puts it behind him. They're not on the same page there. I think probably, you know, as he learns to play this play more and more at the league level, I think this ball goes to the check down most of the time. So first off, what is the coverage? Middle field open, right? They're going to end up being in quarters. Okay, quarters versus four verticals, not great. Okay, to me, this means, in my mind, check down 90% of the time, right away. Quarters, four verticals. The ball's getting to the check down. This is a glorified screen. If for some reason you love the matchup here at one of these seam spots and, they have, and you trust them to have the capacity to slip the second level player, so not get hands on, and you trust them to cross face of the safety, okay, whatever those landmarks are, well, then we can let it rip to the seam. I think he does. I think the guy wins up top. He just doesn't put it exactly where he wants. It's a tight contested throw. It's third and 13. They're never going to be easy on third and 13. Rarely going to be easy. But you can see here up top, watch that under the watch him slip that linebacker type. Right there, got him. But if for some reason you didn't like it, just put it to the back. You know, he's probably going to get tackled. You'll be punting. But you can see here, that's a difficult throw. I still think he could have made it. So I don't dislike the read. You know, maybe the decision, certainly the ball location, isn't it? You know, you know the one that he hit, he hit off shuffle footwork. The last two that he hasn't hit, he's hit off three. And this time I would say he uses probably the incorrect footwork, which to me is five steps. So watch the footwork here. Catch one, two, three, four, five. That's not it. We so, but yo, hold up. We can't be running similar type plays, four verticals, and having three different drops for the, essentially the same play. 
So something's amiss here besides the ball. Third and eight, we get hit here with a hot. To me, this is what I am used to calling a Zimmer special. I feel like this is a little bit dated, but it used to be really popular around the league where you get this double mug. Whichever way the center goes to, the other one blitzes. The other one drops out. To me, he's hot. He kind of sees that he's hot, but he doesn't throw it on time. Okay, so that's a mouthful. Let's talk through exactly what's going on. They're in six-person protection, and that's the first part. So we've got five offensive linemen and the back. They've got essentially seven that can pressure. So three here, three here, and then there's that plus one right here, the seventh guy. Okay, so if all seven of them blitz or whoever the back has, so if the back is going one right here to two over here on a scan and they both blitz, we got to throw hot. Okay, so both of those things happen. The ball, for me, has to come out here on time quickly before we get hit. And we'll talk about how they get there with this pressure from the back end. But you've got to be able to know which one is yours. And essentially, at the end of the day, you've got to think those six are protected. And then I am hot off this player right here. If that player blitzes, I need to know where my hot is. For my money right here, the hot is right here. we got to go. I think we run like a little shallow and like a seven with it. I might have them inverted, but that's, in essence, whoever the third guy is running that slant is the hot. Yeah, I have the number three, number one doing it, who is the number three. Got to throw it. Throw. So how they get there is a little funky. And this is a tough one. I never really liked this look. You get used to it, or I got used to it, playing against Zim damn near all the time. But this idea being that they're going to walk up double mug. So we've got both these guys in here. Again, we've got six. Okay, so just think of it as three and three. So three over here, three over here. Those three those three we've got six in the pass protection unit so we're solid we're good if only those guys blitz five and one this extra player right here is the seventh defender so if the backs person comes of those six we gotta have to throw hot if this guy also blitzes okay you could also just say f it i don't care what the pass pro is if this guy blitzes i'm throwing hot okay, i've been around guys that do that now the secret sauce here for the defense is whichever way the center goes to, that backer type is going to drop out. So he goes to the right. So this linebacker is going to drop out. So potentially he might drop into your hot lane. So they'd much rather have the back eaten up in pass protection than have the linebacker blocked by the center. Okay, so usually what happens is the center ends up blocking no one. And then we've got a free runner and the back is eaten up. Okay, so that's a lot of moving parts to say, hey, we got a free runner to the right. We need to throw hot. Hey, watch the center turn. See that linebacker get out of there? That's not a faux rush. He's going unless the center comes to him. And again, just operationally from Anthony Richardson here, he looks like he's surprised. You got to play this thing hot. Throw it. I should take that back. He doesn't look surprised. He's got to trust himself right there and throw it. He turns it down. He kind of hezzies. Almost like he's throwing it to 83 right there who's not looking. And he's like, eh. Oh, tough. Just not on the same page. Next one here. This is a tough interception up top. This is on Anthony Richardson. I think I'm also going to talk about some design potential flaws here as well. But this is just trying to fit a corner in behind a cloud corner. He gets baited here. I'm used to calling this a Kahari Jones interception back in the day, 94, Chico State. Look it up. Actually, don't. But he threw a couple interceptions on a similar concept. My college coach used to tell me about it all the time. So design-wise here, what I'm talking about is just, I think that the flag and the corner or the sail up top are a little too close for my liking. So what I'm talking about where this thing ends up as being an interception is this, what we'll call a corner or a sail, ends up getting picked off by the corner, okay, who's just kind of in this kind of palms cloudy technique. Now, ways to get around this are twofold. One, have something in the flat that pulls that corner down. Okay, there's nothing really there. What's trying to get to the flat is the back, and it takes too long as a check down. So that's the first part. Get something to the back to get that three level. The other part for me is if you're going to run what I'm used to calling a flag, so a deeper corner from the outside, this thing has to run to the back pylon. So they can't be, essentially what they can't do is what ends up happening here, which is where the ball's going 
with the deep flag are too close. There's not enough space here. You've got to really set this thing and realize, hey, I'm probably not going to get the ball. I'm a team guy. I'm going to set this thing to the back pylon and run 100 miles an hour. So the landmark of that needs to be higher to then allow this kind of sail element to come out with more stretch between the safety. Because if we get a half field safety here, it should be way out of there. And then we should just be high lowing the corner. And if the corner can pick it off, then we need to just throw it to the check down and live to fight another day. So, you know, a lot of things here probably don't work as perfectly as they would like indie wise, but you can see here the spacing of this thing. So first watch the spacing with the number one up top. That deep flag is just not that deep. You know, there, there are a few plays where I would say 11 might not be giving what I would consider max effort. Now he might think he's going to get hit by the defensive end here, but you got to go. You got to feel like you're shot out of a cannon. Does he look like he shot out of a cannon up top? No. To me, it looks like he's about to get lapped. He looks tired, if I'm being honest. So those two are too close, the flag and the sail, the corners. And then if you, that corner is going to make a play on the ball, you just got to throw the check down. I know that's not the design of it. I don't love the back coming across like that to get to the flat. He's never going to pull any flat defender down for you to throw that corner, and it's just a muddy look, and it's a terrible result. So all that being said, if you're Anthony Richardson, the quarterback here, you can't throw this ball if the corner can get his hands on it. He certainly can. Tough interception. Got to learn from it. Just not do it again. Next one here, back to the well with four verticals. Again to the tight end, ripping it versus quarters. Not the easiest look, but the drop is better. The timing is better. Right on him. Again, crazy decisive. A lot to like. So again, I mean, I'm not going to drop the whole play because I've already drawn it up multiple times. But this idea of being up, you got to get around that second level linebacker type quickly, and you got to cross face of the safety. So there's that quarter safety. There's that quarters or shell coverage. If you get the joke, get around that linebacker type without getting hands on, and then find that sweet spot right here. Again, what drop does he take? For my money, this is more of a shuffle, tight reset, great base on the back, good timing, rhythm, decisive drive the ball y'all he's pretty good at ripping these seams when he lets it go hasn't been perfect but they've gotten a good play out of this formation and play multiple times whether it's been slot wing or two by two open four verts nice next one here now we hit the hot or finally see the safety coming down get it out to the flat again second and long they've been heating him up a little bit all day he's finally able to see it get the ball out we're really hot plus one so we're hot off two there, and it's a big chunk. Just take what the defense gives you. Just a really nice job here. If the center is going to the left, okay, so if the offensive line is going here, then we've got the guard one-on-one -on -one here. We've got the tackle one-on-one -on -one here. We are hot. Okay, hot, hot, right here. So once he blitzes, we got to throw this hot. We get a plus one. Okay, this to me is a, a third-level defender safety type also blitzing here. And then this is going to turn into a massive play. So even if the safety wasn't blitzing, we'd still have to throw hot. But because they're overloading us here with four strong, we get out of it, get it out to the flat, nice little chunk. Again, that's just operating at a high level. That's playing quarterback in the league. Can't let people blitz you like this in the middle of the field on second and forever. Great job. Doesn't take a hit. Get it to the open guy. Next one here, third and one. I don't know what the route is down here to the bottom. A little stutter to curl maybe, but Anthony Richardson buying enough time, making a play out of structure, throwing back across his body. Better make sure you got it making plays like this, but I love it. He's got the capacity to create, get out of structure, rip it back across the field. Really nice. Again, just paying attention to that route at the bottom. You know, what is this supposed to be? Stutter, go turn down. I don't know. To me, 11 looks like he's tired. It's not there. Third and one, you got to go. The right tackle takes an L inside. You know, maybe you could go get it yourself just because it's third and one. But look at the vision, the ability to throw that thing back to inside the numbers. Outstanding job making a play, creating out of structure. There's nothing there. Watch our right tackle, overset, get beat inside. Whoop. Got to go. Go create. Nice. Put it right on his chest. Tell you. Next one here. Another just inconsistent play with a hot. We're hot up top, little strong dog from the field. 
America's Blitz. We almost turned this into a disaster. You know, this to me is, it just shows the inconsistency of the hot game. This is actually a great job by the left guard, kind of taking a hit off the first blitzer. But man, we've got to have answers for this. So for my money here, the offensive line is going to the, what I'm used to calling the weak side backer. So they're going right here. We've got five person protection. So really it's a one-on-one -on -one here. And then it's these four turning to these four. Okay, so we would be hot, most likely, theoretically, off one there or one there. If both of these blitz were definitely hot, and you have to have a hot right here. Somebody here has to be running some sort of hot route. Hot route. Red seven. Something, dog. Now, the cool part here, if you love some offensive line play, is when we get this blitz right here, the guard is able to pass it off. So because this guy doesn't blitz, they essentially make these four the four that they're going to. So they do a nice job sorting that out. We still have a free runner though. You still have to throw it hot. You got to play it hot. You don't. You can't know that your all world guard is going to do that. So must throw hot up top. And again, is anybody looking? No one's looking. You know, if anything, I would say you know brings back bad memories for me last year. Is just watching this offensive architecture in Philly and not having hot answers. I think we've seen some hot answers today, but this is one that's pretty easy to see for my money to the left. So again, watch the guard center pass this thing off. The center is going to 23. You see him set looking to the right. Then the left guard passes him off to the center and comes back. <laughs> that's, some, that's some fucking awesome interior line play. We're hot to the left though, regardless. Okay, quarterback channel. Just throw it hot, dog. But again, is one looking on the left? No. Is the other wide receiver 11 looking? No. I mean, come on. You got That's one of those ones in practice. You just put it in his ear. You say, hey, bro, you got to look. Tough. And then this decision at the end, you know, who's he throwing it to? I hope he's throwing it to 11. Because if he's throwing it to one, that's a disaster. Just don't make a bad play a disaster. And this is almost a bad play disaster. It's a bad play. You eat the sack, you go make a play. You learn from it, you throw the hot next time. Winding down here, fourth and five. To me, this is inverted smash. I think this play call kind of stinks. Uh, I think the effort from 11 here really stinks. I think the effort from five is world class. I love the fight. It looks like a dog, bro. He is going, getting after it. Fourth and five, down 10, no quit here. It's not there. Go get it yourself. Fight through someone, run through with someone's face. Outstanding. Just watch the number one receiver at the bottom. You tell me if that's as hard as you can go. Come on, dog. If you got to tap out, tap out. We can't have people like this running on fourth and five for the game. Get out of the game. It's terrible. It's horrific effort. But then look at five. Bro, that, this is contagious effort. I love it from Anthony Richardson. Go get it. Now, again, the play design sucks. Inverted smash, but he gets it himself. But I can't get over the effort from 11, man. And it, trans, and it seeps into the next play also, which ends up getting us hurt. But great effort here. Very next play, we run the same play. Again, the effort at the bottom from 11 is atrocious. That's the type of shit that needs to be circled in a team meeting and said, hey, I don't care if you're like a great dude, great locker room guy. We can't have this happen, man. We can't have that type of effort. When our quarterback is back there, look at our quarterback. Fighting for his life. Nothing there. Terrible play call again. Nothing there. Scrambling, not giving up. Getting injured while your ass is walking in the end zone, hands on hips. I mean, I, it deserves a circle. Okay, You get in the team meeting room. You pull up the board. This kind of effort will get us beat. Just you, you be the judge. Okay, this is this is the film is the film. The eye in the sky does not lie. That ain't it. Look at our quarterback fighting, getting a hit from multiple angles, gets hurt, gets knocked out of the damn game. And we got guys walking around. Now this play call sucks too now. But this fight from five, that's that real deal. I love it. I love it. A lot to like. So that is a wrap. Anthony Richardson. Tough L, tough ending, getting knocked out of the game. Hopefully he's all right with the knee. That being said, I thought there was a lot to like. The dude is athletic. He's a freak. He also made a number of plays, kind of out of structure, creative. I love a competent, robust quarterback run game as well. There was some cool design there with the pistol, flex bone, 
There were some really cool play actions. There were opportunities for shots down the field. It was just a nice mixture of RPOs and looked like a competent, comprehensive, refreshing NFL offense. So in that regard, I thought it was really fun to watch. I'm going to look for more and more of potentially some of the guardrails coming off as far as some of the things that you would look for, for quarterback development, just being a little bit more fluid, more consistent with the hots. If you're going to show on your film that you can't pick up hots consistently and get the ball out, it's going to be one of those things where teams are going to continue to heat you up. I think he did sometimes, just a little bit inconsistent, looking for more consistency in that regard. But man, I'm excited to watch the offensive architecture, the design potential for this coaching staff and this talented quarterback. It's going to be fun to see. Hopefully he can stay healthy and make sure he's out there because they are running him, and I love it. You just want him to stay healthy and be smart with a lot of those hits because he was fighting at the end, and he was. there were some guys that weren't fighting at the end. It's the nicest way I can put it. So you look to kind of just continue to elevate and pull the rest of those guys with him because I love the effort all the way through that thing. He looks like a competitor. Indy might have found themselves – a quarterback fired up to see exactly what it looks like as he continues through the season. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.